Hello, 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 and welcome to my stream, Floating Polly. Um, today we're gonna be able to be doing some substance painter, uh, paint height map painting and roughness painting uh, on the hair that I've got for the character today. Um, in this case, uh, if we just look over in uh, Marmoset right now, what I'm doing is that I'm gonna be texturing this in substance, uh, but I'll have Marmoset open at the same time. So. Uh, and then to check it in engine, what we'll be doing is repeatedly exporting the map out as we uh, continue. Um, as we actually paint it, we'll export it, and then Marmoset will update it uh, automatically. So uh, what this is how far we've gotten uh, so far. There's a couple of uh, roughness issues that we'll be fixing as well. But uh, what we have right now is mostly... Uh, diffuse painted and some base uh, roughness set up but now what we want to be able to do um, as we've made a little bit of a start is get some uh, little bits of height in there um, so that there's a little bit of a uh, difference when the light you know dances over it so uh, without further ado if we'll just go over and uh, move to substance paint now and as before we've got a little uh, preview window on the uh, left there and the actual work on the uh, other side now substance uh, if it's been left a little while it can uh, take a while for it to wake up and so we'll just let it do that shouldn't take very long for it to, uh, to warm up so to speak yeah usually it's that little progress bar on the bottom um, it will eventually load Okay, so we're just going to go back to the layer that we were working on. So, not that one. Because we should have a layer here. Yep, there we go. So this uh, fill layer is defining our uh, new height, uh, color, and roughness. So what we want to do is that we want to apply a paint mask, which we have. Um, that is defining the parameters that are in the fill layer, right? So the, the fill layer just has a simple dark color, a relatively minute but still noticeable uh, dip in terms of the height, so about minus 0 0.04, and uh, a roughness value that is massively increased. We're almost reaching like 1.0 roughness. So uh, the higher that, that roughness is, the less... Uh, well, the more scattered the reflection is. So, uh, in other words, it doesn't appear like the, uh, it doesn't appear very shiny. So what we're hoping for is that when the, uh, the light hits these sort of, um, these dips in the hair, then it's going to be less lit in a specular sense. So we've obviously made a little bit of a start already. And what I'm trying to do is that I want to, uh, try to gradient this mask a little bit so uh, the full amount of the uh, uh, the cut if you will is being applied as this line and then will it will uh, soften out as we get to the uh, edge so that way it won't be like a completely uh, drastic change so let's make a start all right now adjust the brush, get the flow down. And we want to just paint the uh, line. Let me just make sure I've got, yeah, so that it's actually on. And I just want to make sure that I'm painting the actual line in. I'm just going to get rid of this one as well. And when I'm erasing it, I'm using the exact same brush, but I'm pressing X to uh, switch it to uh, a value of zero instead of one. I'm not using the eraser unless I really have to. Uh, the reason for that is so that I can use the flow setting that I've got, you know, because I might not necessarily want to uh, kill the line completely with the eraser. Oops. That back. <laughs> because I don't necessarily want to kill the entire line with the eraser. If I uh, I've got it so that if I were to press 2, oops, not F2, but 
yeah, two, sorry. If I press that, then that's going uh, f with the full amount of uh, flow so that I'd be erasing a line completely. Whereas um, if I'm just uh, pressing X to you know revert back to the uh, zero value, then I can call it kind of softly uh, remove parts of that line. Right? So I'm giving myself a little bit more choice in the way that I can uh, uh, affect the way that it uh, that I erase the lines and such. Okay. I just want to make sure that I'm making it uh, quite neat because it's it's um, comparable to line work really. Even though it's not it's not lines, but uh, we want it to be as uh, kind of smooth and precise as a piece of line work. So a good comparison, I guess, with this. Uh, kind of thing would be uh, like anime figurines. So you could imagine that um, in Marmoset you could render a like an anime figurine or something. And I'm doing this in the uh, material view so that I can see the actual uh, construction, I guess, of the uh, the 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 mesh. So I can see the dips and you know just where the surfaces feel like they are forming like a like a cavity of it not entirely more like you know curvature so to speak oh, I haven't got my pen pressure on Yep, definitely want to have pen pressure on for this job. Because then that way I should be able to affect the uh, the depth amount. I want to try and make sure I'm cleaning up the area as well. I suppose at any point I could, uh, it would be worth flipping over to the roughness channel as well. And I can see that this is where some of our issues are coming from. Over here, there's a lot of uh, um, near enough zero roughness, uh, which may be coming from a paint layer elsewhere. What I want to do uh, is very quickly just correct this. And the easiest way of doing that is to make a fill layer, set it to the roughness that you want it to be. Um, in this way, so I think uh, some value like the one over here, which is about 0 0.69 or something, um, 68, something like that, uh, close enough. And then I'm gonna just add a black mask, right? Because I still want some variance in there but I just want to boost the amount uh, so that it's not quite so low. So I've got another paint mask over here. And I'm just going to apply this. If, I'm, if I cannot find where this is, and it's a struggle to overlap, I can find it on the UV layout instead. It may be over... Yeah, it's over here. So I'm just going to apply very lightly. Okay, and that could help out a lot, making that a lot less weirdly shiny. Okay, there we go. Like I say, still want some roughness in there. Still want some variance, like how it's going uh, down here and becoming less rough. That's fine, you know. But for quick correction, just to make sure that it's 
no like the values are not just so uh weird Same's probably true over in the uh the bangs over here as well a little bit of a uh increase there there you go Alrighty, so now we can go back to our uh, height map painting. Just going to quickly name that so I don't get lost. Truthfully, you should really name the uh, layer from the start. And what I'm doing here is that I'm just sort of applying bit of a sort of gradient if you will along this particular line and it's something I want to see in uh, Marmoset if it's going to work so I, I've got the, the harder sort of initial stroke uh, there and then I'm sort of spreading it out by adding a very very light pressured uh, soft brush so what I'm hoping is that when I uh, look at it in uh, Marmoset, the it's going to look like a sort of curved object. And we're going to, for good measure, do the uh, same thing around on the next line as well. The line doesn't go all the way. We could either extend it or we can allow it to uh, finish off and then just sort of uh, erase like that, just so that it's, it's got a little bit of a blend, I guess. You may find that there are some cases where when you're painting on it, uh, for whatever reason, substance may uh, find some disagreement, in which case it can be easier if we change the alignment to UV. That allows substance to save, apparently. Okay. Just change the alignment to UV and hopefully it will. Okay. I'd like to think that's not a masking issue. It's not. Right, so there's something over here. And it doesn't seem to like to play with. Let's have a look just to check that there isn't like some UV issue or something. Ah, there you go. It's looking for. No, no uh, weird UV issues either. It looks like a perfectly fine UV grid. Okay, it's a bit strange. Why is on overlay on that one? Oh, oh, I see why now. It's because I've clicked on this uh, this uh, square here rather than the actual paint layer. That's why. Right. Okay. I bet. Well, I think that's it anyway. Let me just go back. Is yeah, yeah. So now we're on the actual paint layer. Should work now. Yeah, much better. <laughs> there you go. Because we're applying the extra color as well, so we're painting even more color information. Uh, we could um, remove it if we so wanted to, but it would be good to keep that synchronized. Right, so I'm going to try this one as well while I'm here. So I'm, I'm hoping that you can see the kind of effect that it's got. So this now looks like it has a form, like a plane change here. So it looks like this strand comes out much more than it actually does. Right now. You could model that in ZBrush anyway, 
you could and it wouldn't you know it, it definitely uh wouldn't be wrong um but you know this is a way of getting more detail in that you didn't think uh you'd have now there are some uh, cases here i think it is because of a, a uv change so that there is a uv seam here probably um and we are currently on the uv alignment i'm just going to switch to camera and yeah as you can see it's much better now so yes you will probably be switching between your uh, alignments so um from camera to uv to tangent wrap uh oh around and again you know understandable so okay we're gonna try out this little bit that we've done around here so we've painted this uh height we've painted this height and now we've painted this high. So what I'm hoping is that when we look at this versus when we look at this, it's going to form a, a bit of a difference when we look on uh, Marmoset. So I'm just going to uh, move the window in Marmoset to match. Hopefully it will uh, load a little better than that. Well, it's a little slow right now. A little interesting. Let's just export this first. Okay. okay, so when we export, it just goes to the exact same place uh, as uh, where Marmoset has the textures loaded. So because it runs in the same directory, we click into Marmoset and Marmoset will update. And let's see, we, the change does occur. There we go, that's better. Sometimes it just needed a little uh, movement there. Now, uh, it does work, in fact. Yeah, so that uh, form here definitely changed. And of course, there's some uh, what I might call, I guess, um, issue here where we've basically made the line too thick, like it's too hard and too thick. So just a case of really changing that. Uh, that's the normal plus height plus measurement, right? OK, OK. And I'm going to assume that this will change. Yes, cool. So this changes dynamically with that. Okay. So there are, I think there are some issues where uh, information has been painted onto the mask rather than the paint mask, which can be a little bit awkward um, to think about. Uh, and I wonder if there is a way of easily clearing that well, actually, yeah, there is. It'd just be a case of just erasing everything on the paint mask layer. There we go. Okay, there we go. And then back to our actual um, paint uh, paint mask layer. Going back in, and we're just going to redo that uh, line in here. And reintroduce the gradient and try not to make it too uh too thick. Okay, same over here. We just want to try and soften it up a little bit more. Okay. Okay, and this one here over here is very, very thick. Just want to lighten that a bit because at the moment it's very uh, distinctive. 
And it's in fact too distinctive. Uh, clean up this line as well. I think there's a part over here that we wanted to just try and paint over. Do some of the other side as well. Might be easier. I'm aware. I don't want to make it too muddy either. Like, as uh, the actual like depth color, so to speak, as in the color that's being applied here. Um, I want to be able to adjust that according to what I see in the engine, not what I see in substance. Um, because it's easy to go to uh apply, you know, your changes in substance because you think ah. This, this bit isn't working, I'm going to adjust it so that I can see that it looks better. Then you import it into engine and it doesn't necessarily follow uh, what you were doing before, which can be uh, a bit problematic. So you, you generally want to do your judgments against the, uh, uh, the asset in engine, particularly so if the uh, engine is using a, uh, like a very different method of rendering things to what your uh in engine sorry your your uh to what substance is doing or what you know tip what uh engine you're typically used to like say marmoset or unreal or something like if you were doing a um something for dota you wouldn't you know try to do this with pbr you would use the dota shader in but you'd have to make sure you had it in both uh, substance and marmoset and even then you still want to um, test it in the actual engine anyway because they might have implemented the changes differently like marmoset might have it a slightly different way to uh, substance you know it's never exactly the same unless of course they copied code from the same source <laughs> This bit is too dark.
A little bit ahead, but it's still aggressive. These lines are still a bit on the fixed side. Let's give it a test and see. Okay. okay. It seems if you leave Marmoset for enough time, Gimp's okay. frames don't work. Okay. Marmoset's having a bit of a fit right now. Apologies. Bear with me for a second. Bear with me for one second. Okay, I hope that's fixed now. All right, we're just gonna reboot uh, Marmoset Toolbag. It seems that Marmoset was having a little bit of a fit. Not entirely sure why, uh, to be honest. Mm. There you go. Okay. Let's just see. All right. Mama set is a. Uh... Interestingly, um, performing with uh, processing. Sometimes it wants to uh, eat everything, and sometimes uh, it seems perfectly fine. A um, little strange, but whatever. Um, so now, when we look at that, what I see is that the well, the height exists. The roughness difference does not seem too different um so there are some things i want to try and let's give it a go so at the moment we're pretty close to near basically black i'm going to try and turn it darker i'm going to try and increase the height some more so I decrease the height even. Keep going. Okay. Something. Something like that. Like we'll just make it slightly more extreme. Okay. And then the roughness. I'm gonna turn that further. So. Nine nine point two. Sorry. 0.9921. Let's give that a go. I'm sure that will be interesting, but sometimes you to be able to test something, you have to check the extremes of it. Okay, give that a go. Load in. And so we can see that there is now a massive difference. Obviously too much difference, um, but we can see that it actually does work. Uh, it's just the only thing um, is that I don't really see much in the way of like um, the roughness doing that much to it, which is a little strange. Um, however, 
uh, the actual height map aspect does work. Obviously, it's a bit much right now. So we had it on like 0 0.5 or 0 0.05 or something before, and then we put it on 0 0.2 now. So if we go roughly about maybe 0 0.1, maybe that's a uh, decent balanced figure. So export again. Off we go. I click back in. All right, okay, cool. I guess that gives me the effect that I, I wanted to, although I was hoping that less light would catch on to um, that area. So let's try something else as well. Uh, ambient occlusion is on multiply. I need it on uh, replace, really. Um, some way of basically painting AO. Uh, so let's give this a try, right? So I'm going to add an ambient occlusion channel on here. An ambient occlusion mixing, uh, ambient occlusion mixing, even. I'm going to put it on replace. And you see that it's uh, changed quite a bit there when I've done that. Um, which is interesting, uh, to say the least. And I just want to check what the ambient occlusion reads as right now. Right, right now it reads as null. Um, basically, this whole checkerboard thing is null. Um, so what I'm going to do first is that I'm just going to add a fill layer. Isolate to ambient occlusion. Uh, and then just pull the hair's ambient occlusion. Or it might be down as AO. Or not, apparently. Uh, it might be called something slightly different. We just search for the hair texture instead. And it should be it, but it's not going to tell me, apparently. There we go. All right, it was the ambient occlusion. It was just um, sometimes um, substance, like when you uh, have the name too long, it doesn't quite tell you because it goes off the end and you can't necessarily make these thumbnails any bigger. They're all a preset size. So if you're working on a 4K screen, uh, have fun. Otherwise, yeah. And uh, if you're working on 4K, definitely the small button must be real fun to use. Um, so yeah. Now, anyway, we're on this fill layer with the ambient occlusion on. Ambient occlusion is currently on multiply. We don't want that. We want it on normal. Right. So now we see that the ambient occlusion is there. And then when we go back to our height map here, what I want to try and do is I see this ambient occlusion. I'm going to turn it down. I don't quite want it on nothing, but Let's, as I say, the extremes sometimes give you a better answer. Uh, so sometimes when you when you try with the extremes first, then you can adjust rather than trying to guess some perfect value uh, before that, and then wondering if it's working or not. All right, exports done. It didn't make any real difference. I'm just going to check that the ambient occlusion map is definitely loaded and on the correct channel. It is. Um, hmm. There is an option for cavity map, though. Uh, we could try. Just for, you know, just, just to see what happens. Um, go over and load the ambient occlusion on as its cavity. Channel R. And you see that there's a... A pretty big difference there. Obviously, it's way too much, you know, but it actually works. That was the effect I was going for, just not quite that heavy. Um, so, that's an interesting uh, thing, actually. It may be that we have to make a cavity map instead, and then this will uh, become like another channel. Um, maybe it'll be in the alpha channel of this or something um 
or it will be another map entirely. I'm not entirely sure how we'll do it, so um, let's try setting the ambient occlusion uh, value uh, that we've got for this like um, line painting map, shall we say, uh, to something slightly more, you know, reasonable, perhaps 0 0.65 or something, and then export that again. Okay, and then reload the result in Nama set, and yeah, that's a little better, but now I can't see the actual um, cavity like effect as much, so we're going to pull it down a bit more. Again, and then I see it, yeah. Still a little bit much. Yeah, it's a little bit much, but otherwise it is actually um, doing something. Let's go back up. Three about 0.5-ish. All right. Okay, yeah, that's a good effect. Yeah, that's a lot better. And then if I take that cavity map away, right, and you see the difference, and I flick it back on, and back off, yeah, it's a lot of difference. But of course, I imagine that the ambient occlusion uh, aspect um, because of course it's just taking it from the ambient occlusion and then we've just applied this sort of paint layer over it. I imagine that that's uh, having um, some side effects. So of course we, what we want to do is separate this out into uh, its own, you know, its own map. So we've got base height, roughness, metallic, normal, and what we want to do is add in. Uh, where is it? Yeah. Just going to add in a sort of user map, I think, that that would make the most sense. So just checking that there isn't anything else called that. Yep. Okay. User. We've got it. Uh, not quite sure why the hand. Oh, yes. It's because uh, Substance Painter uses handwriting. Like it uses Windows Ink now. So you every time you're using a tablet, uh, you're going to get this, which of course uh, might be quite funny to go over and type in cavity right is it is, is it gonna get it oh it did hey, that's isn't that uh interesting now i there we go all right i'm gonna enter that in oh wow um, i, I could have just typed it in but sure okay anyway cavity so this gives us a custom channel right and it shows up here I didn't quite understand the capitalization, but sh oh wait, oh it's because it doesn't capitalize it at all. Fair enough, fair enough. All right then, and so cavity here uh, will be its own uh, channel, and you have to sort of configure that. So if we just have a look at what we've got at the moment, it's a um, 32 bit singular level float or something like that. Um, we want to just turn it to like a uh, like a normal texture. Um, so when you look at base color sRGB8, right? So it's a free channel, um, you know, red, blue, green, and then another channel for alpha. You've got height, which is a, a 16 bit uh, float. Basically, just all that really means is that. Um, it has more depth than 8-bit. I think it's double the depth, so it's just more resolution. Roughness, metallic, these ones are pretty obvious. You know, you it's just uh, an amount that specifies 0 to 1 in terms of how rough the surface is and whether or not it's metallic and whatever. So we want to apply the same type of uh, setting as roughness, really. So that's a custom 
uh, channel. And then on cavity, what we want to try and do is uh, emulate the same thing that was going on in roughness, but this time we're, sorry, not in roughness, in ambient occlusion, what we were doing just now, but th this time we want it to be as, in its own channel so that the ambient occlusion data isn't interfering with our cavity data. That's it, really. <laughs> so, uh, we're going to set it to something like a 0 0.45 or something like that. All of our height information is the same, that's fine. And uh, if we go ahead and I'll uh, just save this first. And then what we want to do is uh, we want to export. And over here, there's some configuration as to how the uh, text, like the textures are packed and such. Um, we're currently on the Unreal Engine 4 preset. It's just a system that I understand. Um, but if we go to configuration, and go over here. On in Unreal Engine 4 packed. And if we just try and understand this, so I think this is four different types of uh, texture map. All right. So base color, occlusion, roughness, metallic, normal, and emissive. Assuming that there is an emissive channel in there, which there isn't, we, we don't have one, but that, so we can just ignore that for now. But um, so when it goes over and exports uh, our maps, it, it does it to this specification. So the first uh, texture map is uh, our al albedo or base color, and the alpha map of that uh, would obviously be the opacity. In occlusion, roughness, metallic, it literally is that. And so the occlusion would go in the red channel, the roughness would go in the green channel, metallic goes in the blue channel, right? Normal literally is the normal map and it will use red, blue, green. Um, so what we want to do is we want to add on another uh, one of these. We'll call it, um, shall we go gray, right? Gray scale in this case. And there's some naming convention that you can see here. Uh, if we just have a look, yeah. So it would be dollar mesh underscore dollar texture set underscore and then its name. So we want to try and uh, emulate that. So we're going to go, oh, shall we use uh, the handwriting tool again? Um, Substance seems real keen on letting us use this. So mesh, okay. And then, uh, oh wow, it got dollar as well. How interesting. Um, texture. Well, it's not very good at recognizing my joined up handwriting, I'm afraid. Um, and I'm not totally sure how to uh, edit that. Yeah, oh, there you go. Let's uh, do it slightly more. I'm sure I totally couldn't have just typed that. I am sure that I, you know, totally would have done worse if I had just typed it. <laughs> now, okay, enough of that. All right, so underscore, I'm just going to uncapitalize this. Extra set. Uh, underscore cavity yep okay so it understands that that's a gray uh, space uh, channel so what I want to then uh, do is assign the uh, cavity so that it understands that it's using that right so how do we go about doing that uh, user zero I guess just sort of plug it in maybe Hmm. Ah, there you go. So from user zero, oh, and from user zero, gray channel RGBA. I guess that'll do, right? And then you look at over, yeah, when you click on the others, it's clear channel split collapse. Clear channel split collapse. Not sure exactly how that's configured, uh, but. Let's have a go. So 
we've got a gray channel that has or at least should have oh i see the colors relate to where um it's assigned there you go that makes perfect sense so this yellowy color is linked over here this base color so therefore we want user zero to be linked to this cavity uh, channel excellent and we're just gonna uh i don't know if you can save this it'd be cool if we could save it i don't see a uh, save button so to speak okay well maybe it's because it's a preset so hopefully it will um hopefully it will keep it let's let's give it a go so if we export that out okay and what we're going to do when we go back in marmoset we see of course that that information uh that was in that ambient occlusion um where we had that uh how do we call it like in that ambient occlusion channel where we had painted in our sort of lines but of course didn't quite like it's we've taken that bit away and we've put it into a uh, new map so now what we're going to do is just find that uh cavity map should be around here somewhere there we go if we just show it yeah it's just there and and you can see that it's um pretty much just our line work so that's how we can basically make a new channel and export specific uh substance data to it and hey look at that right so now we have our uh new uh data in that um uh you know in this sort of cavity map input in marmoset but we've exported a specific um set you know this specific texture set to do this um for whatever reason i don't know why but marmoset really is um picking up a lot of resources in um in this particular run i'm not entirely sure why so i'm just gonna save it and just reload i don't know why marmoset is having a struggle it's not usually okay you're gonna have a struggle now yeah apparently oh and then it feels fine again i don't know yeah substance isn't having a struggle i would expect substance to have a struggle but if my armor set's having a bit of a struggle, we're going to have a bit of a problem, uh, but that's okay. Um, we only need it for the preview anyway. We just want we just want to see what my armor set sees. We, we don't necessarily want it to um, render anything too hard anyway. So, so now that we have our cavity being exported into a different map, uh, we can just undo uh, those changes in the admin oh, okay no they're already uh, gone because we killed the channel that's fine so if we go back to our uh, painting and we can try experimenting with uh, some of the uh, cha like the changes so for instance uh, we could probably change this line color to be a little bit uh, brighter and more uh, smooth so it's not too jarring. I'm just trying to find a decent color. Okay. Maybe a little. It might also be because the uh, the actual yeah it's too op opaque. So we're just gonna lower the opacity a little bit since most of the work's going to be done by that cavity map anyway uh we don't need to go too hard on the base color this time uh the roughness of course still needs to be uh quite high so that's fine height map is at 0 0.1 that should probably be all right all right cool. go ahead and save that Uh, let's paint some more changes in here so mm. 
What might help is occasionally flicking towards the uh, mask. So there they are. So we can see exactly where we've been painting all of this time. And any parts that seem kind of a, a bit much, we can just um, oops, eliminate, but uh, it's not quite fully on zero. You don't really want um, to be painting on either, like on an in-between, unless you actually want to be painting on that in-between, um, because then it just becomes kind of confusing. So if you uh, if you're painting and it's on like zero point two or something, you know, and you're painting a height map, you're gonna be painting by accident that you know slight increase in height, and then you're gonna be wondering why, uh, why is it changing so so much when you're not even painting height because you were painting height, you know, because you were painting on uh, an extremely low value or something, so you don't want you don't want that. Does that make sense? <laughs> Basically, like on your um, grayscale, when you're painting a map in, you don't really want to be painting. Uh, you don't want to be painting anything that isn't either a zero or one. Let the flow uh, setting and the pen pressure do all of the little, you know, decimal numbers for you. Okay. In addition to these sort of like little, um, you know, cutting or um, like little uh, depressions, I guess. One thing we can also do is the exact opposite where we raise the surface. Um, but again, of course, you know, there's that's actually even simpler because all we have to do there is just increase the uh, height. Don't really need to increase, uh, like mess around with roughness too much or anything. Since the surface is, you know, has uh, risen, you know, a lot of things is just sort of taken care of. And I guess the most that you might want to do is paint some ambient occlusion data or something. So you want to be slightly careful that it's being painted in the right area. If you paint over an edge, it can uh, change the way that that appears somewhat. Right, so if you've like accidentally dabbed here, um, and you can see that that's changing, like and forming this uh, shape here, right, because that's responding to the height map. So you have to be careful if uh, you've gone and painted a line in the wrong place. It's going to change the way that it actually uh, renders out. Super careful. There is something that like you might be tempted to do with hair and I might actually advise against it is uh, attempting to use say like a, a texture or something to kind of not automate this process but to basically add a pattern on. It works with realistic or um, what you might call I guess Final Fantasy hair like you know that sort of style where it's generally more realistic and using lots of hair cards it doesn't really work with polygon hair so much um, 
The reason being is that unless your UVs are like perfectly straight, they're and even then you're still gonna run into problems. Um you're gonna find that it looks too artificial, like you've slapped a texture on, because it, that's exactly what you did. But unlike because with realistic hair, uh there's just so much of it that it doesn't really, you know, change anything, you know. Um it's all going to vary enough anyway. With polygon hair, it's you know, you, you actually have kind of a low resolution of dealing with things so it's sort of like the low and then the lower resolution it is the worse it gets so it will sort of um detract from uh the way that it looks you don't want to uh, apply like a, a straight up texture if you can help it you probably want to just want to hand paint it if possible Because the more generic uh, it looks, you know, the worse uh, it will be. And when, when something is applied as like a base texture with no uh, authoring or variance, it will appear as though it's just a, a texture that's been applied. So with uh, this type of hair, you probably want to be hand painting uh, as much as you can of it. A bit.
thing. It's not too bad. Alrighty then. Just want to try and do some uh, lines on the tips as well. Not much, just a little bit of like, just sort of marking there. So. aim <laughs> Do a bit more here as well Moving the lights around just so I can see where the height and the cavity is going. Like that. I just want to throw a few lines in here. I don't want it to be too much though, so I'm getting, doing some very light pressure and I'm not um, going too crazy with the stroke on that. Okay. All right, so let's see what that looks like in Marmoset. Okay. All right, then. Okay. Not looking too bad. Well, that metallic key. But not so uh, bad. Not so bad.
I just want to check that there's no uh, there's nothing too weird when I look at the mask. I want to just so when I look at the mask, I just want to clean up uh, the lines just so that it looks a bit smoother. I definitely don't want like uh like little uh bits there like I don't want um dots it shouldn't appear like a dot at all so and if that is happening I want to clean that up so that it doesn't uh, appear that way because like if there's any kind of like sudden change like that that makes it look uneven and it's gonna really show up over there there was a bunch of like it looks sort of a bit dotty there I uh, really wanted to make sure that it wasn't uh, appearing that way
interesting. That's strange. Not sure why that's there. The wireframe view just to try and see what's going on there. All oh, right, okay. So, this is where uh, some parts of the mesh below it are overlapping with the mesh above it. Okay, that's fine, not a problem. We'll ignore that and then just uh, take a look at the low poly and then make changes as we need to, but we don't need to do that right now. Mm, now I'm setting slow again. Like it might involves like this might involve um if it doesn't pick up very quickly. Uh, it might involve uh some continual like restarting of Marmoset. I do apologize. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to restart Marmoset. I do apologize uh, for the uh, latency. This is not uh, usual. Are we good? Are we good? Uh, really not sure why Marv's, my uh, Marmoset is throwing such a fit. I do apologize. It will be, we will be trying to uh, fix the issue uh, for the next stream. Um, we'll look into why uh, Marmoset is having such a problem. It's never uh, had this much of a problem before. It's normally quite good about it, but clearly that's a bit of a problem. Okay.
Hmm. It's a little bit problematic uh, right now. Yeah, Marmoset Marmos doesn't want to uh, do this particularly well right now. Um, so what we're going to have to do is sort of be very periodic. I don't know why, uh, for instance, it comes and goes as it pleases. Like right now, uh, it's a lot smoother, but unfortunately, like if we leave Marmoset to um, sit there for a bit as we work on it and then reload, um, Marmoset seems to take up a lot of uh, processing power. Um, so much that it does actually like harm the stream. So I may need to play around with some settings uh, on uh, the streaming software that I'm using to determine like if I can achieve a uh, balance and also to make sure that um, like the actual um, process priority like should be going towards the streaming software, not the uh, uh, Marmoset. I don't know why Marmoset wants to take that much just to load a simple model, but uh, apparently it's that much of a bother for it. Doesn't seem to add priority either. Fortunate. Alright, let's try and continue. So, I believe we've just exported and this should be working now. Okay, so we can see that it has made quite a bit of difference um so we'll just rotate this side some more to the light as well yeah so this sort of uh extra uh detailing has kind of worked i think there's still quite a bit of um like perhaps smoothing or uh making it a little bit uh shall we say, like, the the line quality, I guess, to be quite sharp, shall we say. So if we try and um, make it so that there is a sort of sharp uh, line and then smoother fall off, it may look better. Because at the moment, it does feel like it's a little bit um, on the fixed side. And it may also be down to the color uh, that has been uh, like the opacity of the um, the color map that is also assigned to this. So if we lower that, uh, probably take it off overlay actually as well, and just put it on something like darken or multiply. Probably multiply seems the uh, way to go about that. Yeah, something like that, right? Let's save. Right, here we go. Let's let's try it, shall we? Uh, export. Because Marmoset normally loads and unloads the maps okay, but um, let's see. Yeah, see, it seems fine if I do it within a certain period of time. Mama said doesn't like proceed to unload itself, but uh, if I leave it too long, I guess, um, then Mama said will go, oh, I guess I just don't do anything now and proceeds to, you know, be a sloth for the next half an hour. So mm, not particularly amazing performance by Mama said today. All right, so. Okay, that didn't really make that much difference. Like whenever I had... If I were to say take the base map off entirely, um, like I say, put zero opacity there. So all we've got is the, uh, you know, the existing color, the cavity map, and all of that stuff, right? So if we go ahead and export again, because we're exporting within such a short period of time, it should go okay. Yeah. So a lot a lot of this color is being defined by the cavity map as expected. Um which is understandable, that's fine. 
There is also some settings, I guess, to play with as well. So there's a diffuse cavity and a specular cavity, which I didn't quite see. Um, so if we just play around with that a little bit. Something like that. Cavity. I guess something like that. Okay. We'll put the diffuse back as well. There you go. And if we look on cavity, oh no, we'll just go. Hmm. Let substance load as well. Okay, I can just play around with the mask here as well because at the moment it's on like uh, very like full. We can try and just mess with that a little bit. Oh, apparently it's substance. Oh no, 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 it's bad. It's fine now.
want to try and sharpen these a bit more. I'll try and get these lines as thin and sharp as possible.
we're gonna have to be super careful with uh, uh Marmoset. You want to try and uh, replicate some of this over on the fringe as well. Yep. The ones over by here might be. I mean, they're okay. It's not too bad, but they might be a bit thick. Okay, that seems a bit neater now. Neat in this first layer as well. Hmm. 
Okay, there's just a little bit over at the um, top where it's a little bit uneven. Oh. Okay. I don't want to work on the back of the uh, hair forever though, so let's try moving on to somewhere else where we can apply this. Let's try uh, working on the fringe for instance. And now, um, what would be a good idea would be to simply copy the layer. Um, Give it a bit to think about that. Apparently, it's quite a arduous task. Okay, and then we're gonna paste it into the fringe uh, folder. Get it in there. If it would. Above that, above that. All right, so um, the only thing that we need to really do here is just clear the mask um, and then reapply it. So re add the mask in, and then um, because it was already masked to the fringe area to begin with, but there's no point having data in there, you know, mask information that clearly, you know, doesn't apply so and then we just go over and repeat this sort of uh process of working out you know what parts do we want to add some depth to and uh the immediate targets would of course be the uh you know these sort of um end strands where they sort of uh combine with the other uh, strands, so where they go over and sort of join up, you want to sort of extend that uh, cut so that it looks like they form, uh, like they're still separate. Of course they're not, uh, but you, know, you just want to try and suggest that they are. And then of course you want to try and uh, throw some from the start uh, where they are as well so like um, even though there is a you know it doesn't physically separate you want to try and suggest that there is some separation going on So I guess something like something like that. So now, even though the actual geometry um, combines about here, so it merges about here, we want to suggest that actually it goes on a bit longer, right? Something like that. You do the same here as well.
All right then. There. So the effect is sort of working, where it's sort of making it seem like these pieces are longer than they act, like they don't merge, um, and they seem longer than they actually are. some over here as well. Just means to be small things. And if we can just get some strands going in.
Uh, let's just see what that looks like in Marmoset now. Let's hope it doesn't lag too hard. We are getting some effects there. Yeah, there's a part over here which is a little too uh, thick. I think it's on the back here, so we gotta go uh, backtrack a bit. There you go.
mask again. Alright then, so we're just going to finish off uh, this little bit here and run it through Marmoset. I do apologise for all of the uh, uh, connection issues that you may have experienced. So there may have been uh, skips or visible um, like gaps in, for instance, the uh, recording that may be possible. And of course, if you were here, then you may have experienced the uh, lag yourself, so I do apologise. Hopefully it'll be something that uh, is corrected uh, for next time, though, and we account for how much um, processing power, I guess, uh, Marmoset is using. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're just going to draw on some last uh, few lines and then basically to uh, have a look at what it looks like in uh, Marmoset, or try to. Just finishing some of these off now. At least, at the very least, in substance, um, it does appear to work the way that I want it to. Yeah, so, you know, if just basically little line details uh, that help to sort of separate it a bit and make it seem a little bit more complex than it actually is. Um, yeah, basically. Alright. So there's a little bit of a erasing there. Uh, right. And we still haven't even worked on the actual braid part yet, but you know that's just uh, what comes with working on what was what is essentially the much more complicated part of the hair, that is to say the back and the um, front. Once all that's down, the braid itself is actually not complicated at all. It's just process at that point. You know, just painting the uh, um, the color on that, and of course. Uh, you know, paint in some height and uh, roughness across it. You know, there's nothing particularly special or complicated about that, though. It would just be processed. So it might, uh, hopefully, it will be done by the time uh, next stream runs so that we don't have to go through that and we can move on to something else. That would be ideal. Um, but for now, let's just have a look at what we uh, basically came up with in two hours. Okay, so we learned how... Um, to, to make a new uh, channel in Substance, and we learned how to export it as part of uh, the uh, export parameters, right? So it automatically goes to its own file. 
now. Let's have a look. Okay. There's still a little bit of messiness in some places. Sorry, it's still uh, buffering. Do apologize. Maybe easier if we just move straight into the marmoset view now. Um, if it would like to uh, proceed, of course. It would like to proceed. <laughs> oh, Mama says it's a delightful program sometimes. Don't know why. I, I really don't know why. Right, let's give it that. It. And now it just runs perfectly fine. I don't, I don't know. I really don't understand why. So we're just going to switch back to Marmoset. And like, as far as I can tell, it's running perfectly fine now because it's been restarted again. Um, right. So when we look at it like this, and if we just turn around, uh, turn the uh, hair around, just so it's facing the front light. Yeah. Yeah, it's all looking fine. Um, I'm just going to check the roughness as well while I'm here. Yes. Uh, mostly the same. It's just a shade brighter, so we might uh, turn it down to match the uh, new painting. But we'll do that next time, or, or you know, it'll be ready for next time. Uh, we want to try and really move away from uh, the hair now, so... A lot of this stuff should probably be done uh, in, um, some of this will be done like off offline and then for tomorrow, uh, my hopeful goal, um, I'm not sure if I can reveal every mesh easily, but there you go, I guess I'll have to do, uh, keep going, keep going. So the goal that I've got uh, that I want to achieve for next time. So if we can get these braids done before that, what I want to really move on to is all of this sort of area here so that we can, you know, actually start painting in some, like, you know, cloth and, um, you know, start doing some more interesting things with uh, substance, maybe even uh, probably not cloth texture so to speak but like um there wouldn't be like a uh like a pattern assigned we're going to take some inspiration from like figurines and stuff uh which tend to be made out of uh you know like plastic pvc or things like that and um with that kind of stuff they don't really like texture uh the um plastic like the it depends sometimes on the figurine um, if it's particularly like expensive, maybe there might be something, but most cases will uh, just be, um, you know, just the f the shape, you know, and the and the lighting basically powers it. But they tend to also have quite um, low roughness as well, so it tends to be quite shiny. Um, we'll probably show some references of this kind of thing uh, next week as well. So that will give us some kind of target that we want to try and achieve. Alrighty, so uh, I apologize again for the quality of the stream. Um, I will look to try and fix that as well. Hopefully, uh, Marmoset will throw less of a fit. Um, with that, 
like even now I can see that the frames are being skipped. I'm not even doing anything uh, with it, but yes, uh, hopefully it will all be uh, fixed for next time. That's the goal anyway.